So in this video, I want to share some uh, tips for creating high quality codes and good codes. Uh, so first I'll explain what I mean by good codes and high quality codes. Then I'll uh, share four pieces of advice and I'll show you some examples from an NVivo data set that I'm using, as well as uh, show you some examples of codes that I just don't think are good. So first let's uh, briefly define what I mean by a good code. So uh, as I explained in another video, so you should be able to see it on the screen now, um, the purpose of coding in general is to generate good understanding of the data. The purpose of coding is to create a kind of a table of contents. Uh, essentially, that, that's uh, what the list of codes uh, should be to you. A table of contents that will help you understand your data uh, to the extent where you can uh, reflect on the findings, understand what the data is telling you in terms of your findings, and based on that, uh, develop your themes. Therefore, following this logic, a good code is simply a code that will help you understand your data. And uh, I also often repeat that essentially a good code is just a code that makes sense to you. That's why I very often say don't worry about the wording. As long as the code is clear to you and makes sense to you, you should be fine because you won't be evaluated based on your codes. You'll be evaluated based on the final, on the final product and how you got there as your um, your business, so to speak. So you could argue, of course, uh, based on what I just said, that how, how can somebody call a code a good code or a high quality code or a poor code? And, and you're right, like I said, there is no universal set of guidelines, but uh, there is some advice based on my experience, some advice that I believe will simply uh, help you save time, will help you avoid situation where you're wasting time, you created your codes and then you're looking at them, you don't really know what they mean, they don't mean much to you and, and you're basically wasting your time going back to your data. So that's what I mean by high quality codes, codes that will help you develop that good understanding relatively quickly. So the first characteristic, and this is something I've said so many times before in my other videos, and also if you've spoken to me personally, you know that that's one of the first things that I usually say, your codes should be descriptive. They should be descriptive. They should not be uh, some, some abstract concepts. They should not be single words, ideally. Of course, in some situations, single, a single word may make sense, but, but generally, they should not be uh, something short and abstract that doesn't make much sense without any, without any context. Instead, as I often say, your codes should almost be like little summaries of what uh, somebody said. Uh, therefore, as I said, they should be really descriptive. So now I want to show you an example from uh, the data set that I'm using. It's a sample data set that I use for presentations. And you can see some example codes here. So you can see that they are in fact descriptive. Uh, so here, for example, it's, it's a, it's a data about teachers' experiences. Uh, so uh, here, for example, school reputation being more important than the students' or teachers' well-being. As you can see, I, I, it is very descriptive. It's a full sentence, pretty much, reflecting something that certain participants said. Or here, leadership influences the overall quality of the teaching experience. It doesn't just say leadership. It doesn't say leadership because leadership uh, there, there are so many things, and I'll come back to this point because my four pieces of advice essentially are really centered around similar topics. So uh, it doesn't say just leadership, in which case uh, after, after I created 50 or 100 or 200 codes, I wouldn't really know. It doesn't get me closer to understanding my data if I see leadership among you know, the 200 codes. Here I see that leadership influences the overall quality of the teaching experience. I know exactly what was uh, said in that instance. You can see other examples here. Staying in the job just because there is nowhere else to go. Uh, affected health as a result of stress and workload. So again, I know exactly what this, uh, what this extract is about. It's not just about health. If I just called it health, it could be all kinds of things. This one is specifically about affected health, affected health as a result of stress. So as you can see, this is an initial, if, if you want to see, if you want to understand more about the process of coding, feel free to watch my other videos. This is of course the initial stage of coding. It's not, uh, these are not themes and I would not keep them as uh, in this form in my final thematic framework, but initially as I'm exploring the data, this is the kind of codes that I want to see. This, as I said, will help me understand my data uh, as well as from, uh, from a more methodological or theoretical or academic perspective. Uh, this helps me uh, minimize bias, minimize bias and therefore increases validity. Because again, 
I'm simply describing what they said. I'm not, I'm not using my judgment, uh, not yet. I'm not using my interpretation. I'm not using the previous knowledge. I'm not, uh, I'm not using uh, some concepts, some you know, theoretical concepts, abstract concepts from the literature to describe what's being said in this passage. But rather, I'm simply describing, like I said, summarizing almost what somebody said. This means, uh, th uh, this means that uh, researcher bias is being uh, minimized. And this directly leads to the second piece of advice, which is very related and very similar, because like I said, it's all essentially about being detailed and being clear. Uh, the second uh, piece of advice being uh, to have a code that reflect the content of that code, explain the content of that code. Here what I mean in particular is that you want to avoid codes such as, for example, um, how people feel about teaching. If that was the name of the code, how people feel about teaching, you're reading uh, an extract, uh, you're reading the interview and somebody is talking about, you know, feelings towards teaching and you're uh, coding that as how people or how she feels about teaching. Uh, you don't want to, to do that because all you know later as you go through your codes, all you will know is that yes, there is something about how people feel about teaching. But like I said, the whole purpose of this process is for you to really know what's in the data, not just know uh, vaguely what's uh, you know what kind of topics were discussed because I'm sure you know that already because you develop your interview guide and you conduct your study so uh, so having such codes uh, doesn't really get you any closer to understanding your data this is in fact a very common situation very common problem that I see uh, among my students I see you show me these uh, coding frameworks when we meet uh, and and this is a very common problem so it kind of makes sense I understand the logic and and even in some cases, so again, as I said, everything is subjective and, and flexible when it comes to analysis. In some cases, and even uh, in one of my courses, when I talk about data analysis, I say that there, uh, there is such approach, I called it coding chunks, where you may in fact kind of uh, first try to loosely classify, categorize your data into these general categories, and then come back to these uh, codes and break them down further. So, so yes, in some cases this may be helpful, although I would say that still more often than not, like I said, it will, in the long run, it will simply waste your time. So, especially if you have lots of data. If you had only five codes, if you had a very limited data set and, and you first started with, for example, uh, codes such as general challenges or you know advice, this kind of thing, and then you plan to go back to that and break it down further, uh, in some cases that would be okay, but imagine having 200 codes or 300 codes and seeing codes such as the ones that I uh, just mentioned. So just something that says, you know, uh, opinions or, or, you know, challenges without actually listing these challenges. It doesn't really get you any closer to exploring your data. So here again, I want to uh, show you an example from, uh, from this practice data set and just have a look at this code uh, that says challenges. Uh, it does have lots of challenges underneath. So as you can see, low salary is a challenge, workload is a challenge, uh, just to remind you it's about teachers' uh, experiences, fear of losing the job. Again, they are quite descriptive, although some of them, just like I said before, workload obviously is a single, uh, single uh, word, but in this case it makes sense because it's here in in my challenges category or group of codes. So, but I do actually list the challenges. Now imagine if, if you only had this and you just saw this code, challenges, and that's all. All you know, as I said, as I often explain in these situations to, uh, to my students, uh, looking at this, all I know is that there is something about challenges, but, but that's not the point. Like I said, the point is to understand exactly what's being said in the data. So if you have this and you have these challenges listed, that's uh, generally what you want to have. And this directly leads us to another piece of advice, which is to, to let the codes uh, tell the story of the data through the hierarchy and the organization of codes. So uh, as I said before, you firstly you want your codes to, to tell that story, uh, so to speak, through their, uh, the way they are, they are worded. So you want them to be descriptive. But the other way in which they will tell you that story is through their location in the data set is through the hierarchy and and uh, general organization how you organize them so again let's have a look at this uh, this group of codes challenges and just imagine or actually I'll just copy and paste it here uh, this is something that I see again a lot and very often when I help somebody fix their data set uh, 
there are little fixes that need to be applied and and very often these fixes include just creating such categories so if you if you look here and you just see this uh, workload uh, you don't really know what this means in the context in the broad context of this study if you just see it here uh, if you the moment you see it under challenges it's clear the code through this a hierarchy again as I said through where it's placed it's telling you a story of the data there were challenges one of the challenges was the workload of course in this example it's uh, it can be argued that it's relatively clear and obvious anyway because workload is probably uh, something that's, that's a, a bit of an issue so you could probably figure that out but if it was something more general like money and it was just there you know hanging among uh, just you know numerous other codes you don't really know if it's something good about money if it's something bad about money all you know is that somebody said something about money so uh, even here with our workload example uh, to be honest workload could be a good thing maybe if i had a if i had another group of codes saying you know things or good things or or factors that can positively contribute to experiences and I had workload there, then of course it means there is some maybe realistic or good workload. But if it's just there among the codes, like I said, all you know is that something was said about workload. So through this organization, uh, through placing the codes in, you know, in, a, in a category or under another code, you let the codes tell the story of the data. And the final piece of advice, and it's something I recently uh, recorded a full video about, uh, so generally, and, and also something that all of these uh, tips that I shared so far kind of lead to have lots of codes, lots and lots of codes. As I said, I won't be going into detail. I have a whole separate video about this, but it's always good to have lots of codes. The only problem, the main problem, if there is ever a serious problem <laughs> during our uh, conversations with my students, is when they don't have enough codes. Very often they have lots of codes, as I said in that video, I've seen uh, I've seen data sets where there are 700 codes. Recently, I saw another one which is even bigger of a data set. I saw I think two or three thousand codes, which admittedly can be challenging when you try to minimize that number of codes eventually. But I would still take this over not having enough codes. If you don't have enough codes, you're just not go going to understand your data. There is a high probability that if you don't have enough code, if you don't have many codes, you probably coded very general and abstract concepts and categories, which again, is not a good thing. So, so yeah, you want to be detailed and you want to have lots of codes. This way you can really understand your data. So this is what I understand by high quality codes. And now finally, I promised uh, to show you some examples of uh, of bad codes so so let's have a look at uh, poor codes folder i just created them so the, they are just for the purpose of presentation but let's just quickly uh, go through these codes so uh, feelings about teaching so this is exactly something that i explained in this video and and i i think i believe that now you understand why this is a problem feelings about teaching it doesn't really tell me much apart from there is something about feelings about teaching but how am i supposed to uh, come up with some uh, with some conclusions with some understanding with some findings if all i know is that somebody said something about feelings about teaching so uh, so ideally if you do have this kind of code of course you want to break it down further so you want to have something like like this so feelings about teaching and then you know hates this uh, hates teaching and and uh, loves teaching and, and things like uh, like this so so this makes more sense or let's just delete these quickly or if this was under another one so let's say you know factors influencing the experience of teaching and then we had feelings about teaching there again it, it makes sense so so this relates to my point about uh, the hierarchy and, and where you put codes However, if it's just by itself and it just says feelings about teaching like it does now, it doesn't really help us. Like I said, it doesn't get us closer to our theme. So what happened to her in the, her first job, again, doesn't say anything. I still want to know what happened. Uh, so, so it doesn't really help me at all. 
same problem. Uh, reasons to leave the job, same problem. So I don't have, I don't know the reasons. If I have, if there's lots uh, about reasons to, to leave the job, it's probably a study about reasons uh, why people leave the job. So, so I'm not any closer now to my goal of understanding these reasons uh, than I was at the beginning of this study, because obviously I know they probably uh, said something about these reasons, but I still don't know what they are. So it's not a good code. And, and money, again, just like I said before, uh, money can be a good thing, money can be a bad thing, it can be a factor that influences something, can be uh, something that somebody uh, is lacking or uh, in need of. So it doesn't tell me anything. All I know is there is something about money. So, so I hope you understand now why these are not good codes. I hope you understand now what I mean by high quality code and a good code and, and how good having these good codes will get you uh, to developing your themes. Uh, if you learned something new, please like the video, uh, leave a comment and uh, tell me about your, maybe your strategies or your ways of developing good codes. So like I said, it's, it's just uh, the guidelines. This is not to, this is not a universal rule or a universal truths that I shared in this video. It's just what I believe uh, based on my experience, uh, what helps us to, to develop a coding framework that gets us to uh, developing themes. But if you have your own reflections on this topic, I would love to hear them in your comments. Also, if you need uh, support with your codes, uh, feel free to reach out, feel free to explore the options of different uh, tutorials that I offer. And one of the things I do is, as I said in this video, look at my students' codes and try to support them, try to move them forward or try to unblock the process because that's another thing that often happens that you have your codes and you don't really know how to move forward. So feel free to explore these options. Otherwise, just watch the, the free content that I have on my channel. And like I said, feel free to comment, ask me things in the comments. I'm always happy to respond.